So what I have here is a cheap Harbor Freight pipe bender. You heard that right, pipe, not tubing. So uh, a friend of mine was nice enough to lend this to me. These can be had at Harbor Freight for pretty cheap, I think around 175 bucks or something like that. Um, and oftentimes on YouTube and stuff, you'll hear about people using this style uh, to build you know, bends in tubing for vehicles. It's not ideal, but it is kind of a cheap alternative. One of the problems you'll get with this style of pipe bender uh, when you use it for tubing is oftentimes the tubing will kink. So there are a lot of tips and tricks out there on how to use this type of uh, bender for tubing for like automotive use and stuff like that. Um, there's one video in particular by Dirt Lifestyle Nate where he goes into how he used this style of bender uh, back in the day to kind of make some of his original bends for his stingers and sliders and all sorts of stuff. So it's definitely doable. I think part of that is patience, preparation, and just taking it slow. Uh, so that is one reason why you saw me packing my tubing with sand. Um, oftentimes people will wet the sand just to get a super good pack. I didn't wet it, but I did tamp it down. Um, I kept adding sand and then I capped the ends with duct tape. Some people, if they want to get super hardcore, they'll actually weld a cap on the end. I've heard of people getting decent results by just using duct tape caps. Uh, and then another option too, when you use this, this style bender is people hit the tubing with heat and just kind of warm it up. Um, I've heard people get good results with that. I'm not going to do that. Um, but just packing it with sand, taking it slow, going in increments as you'll see. Uh, and hopefully I'll get some decent results. So I've got 24 feet of tubing. I only need about 12 feet or so total for my sliders. Anyway, let me uh, get this set up, kind of eyeball it. This is my first time actually using one of these, so I'm gonna take it really slow and see what I'm working with. So at this point, I just kind of wanted to eyeball it and get an idea of how this setup's going to look. Um, depending on where I want my bend, I need, you know, some excess off to the side, which unfortunately is going to be cut off and, you know, it'll be scrapped. Uh, but in order to reach these rollers, I need some sticking out. Uh, another thing to consider too is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark in half inch increments and just ease myself into this bend. The hope is that that'll help reduce the amount of kinking that occurs due to the, the uh, pipe bender. Okay, I'm back. 
Things are a little different than the last time you saw me. The sun's a little bit higher in the sky. I've got some bent pipe uh, tubing here behind me and I've got a setup right here. So I went ahead, I did one full uh, piece of tubing and now I'm gonna walk you through how I'm doing this second one. Okay, so one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of tubing here and I'm just gonna run it all the way out uh, I've got this basically right on the edge of the roller, which in my experience here works okay. It doesn't like slip off or anything. Um, I am going to orient the, this is HREW, hot rolled electric welded. So I'm going to take the seam. I'm going to make sure it's at a 90 degree to the surface that I'm working at. It's right about there. The reason for that is the welded seam has different material properties than the rest of the metal. So by putting it in to a neutral plane here, it won't be stretching or bending or anything like that. So uh, then we don't have to worry about it. So this point right here, this is the, the furthest out point that I can bend from. So I'm gonna mark this right here, bink, just like that. And then what I found through trial and error, uh, half inch increments worked uh, the best for me. So I'm gonna put in some half inch increments now. That's eight, eight or so. Um, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and tension it up and then start the bending process, slow and steady. At this point, uh, the rollers are starting to make the tubing slide as I apply pressure. So I can't do half inch increments. I'm doing more one inch and I'm trying to compensate for the slide. <clears throat> okay, so this is the first bend that I made for this piece. Um, if you look on the ground, I have a 45 degree angle marked down and I think I actually nailed it. So now I've got my piece of square tubing. This is the bit that runs under the pinch weld on the vehicle. So I'm just kind of eyeballing sort of approximately how this is going to engage with, it, with the, the tubing. Get an idea of where I want my other bend to be. So I'm going to take some finagling. As you can see, it's been a little while since you last saw me. Um, well, I sure paid tuition on this one. Uh, I think the last two bends though that I did out of the eight total, I, I think I got a pretty good system down. I've got two sets that match basically perfect. I'm gonna clean these up. I'm gonna take the duct tape off. I'm gonna get the sand out and then I think I'll cut them down a little shorter because they're extra long right now uh, and then I think I'll probably call it a day. That was a bit of work wasn't it? I got my two outer bent pieces, and now I've laid everything out here so that you can kind of see the overall plan. Um, I've got these pinch weld rails um, just sitting on top of the tubing right now. Um, the reason why is I still need to do my final cuts, and my plan is to kind of take the side uh, kickouts and just, I'd like to angle them up. I like that look. I think it'll, it'll look uh, pretty good. So that's gonna take a bit of thinking as well. I'm gonna take some uh, some two by two, I think. Um, unless I decide to use some of the scrap tubing, 
and I'm gonna make some supports that go between the pinch weld rail and the outer tubing. So I just wanted to give you guys kind of just a quick rundown. It's coming together. Uh, let's see if I can show you kind of some different angles here. It's the game plan, it's starting to look like something. So that about wraps it up for today. Um, I'll have to pick this up again another time and I'll see you then. I just got back from my buddy's house. Uh, he's the same guy who lent me the tubing bender to use. Um, he also picked up a cheap notcher and I was able to go over there and just use it real quick to rip some of these notches. Um, they should fit perfectly with each other, as you can see. They're pretty gnarly right now, but uh, I think they'll clean up pretty well, as you'll see hopefully soon. A little bit of grinder work and these are good to go. They're all cleaned up and perfectly matched up to uh, the tubing diameter, so they should make great weld surfaces. Um, ignore the fact that they're all different lengths right now. They were kind of made out of scrap. Uh, I'll just be cutting those down, maybe even today, to the correct size. Um, I'm planning on two on each side and then I did a fifth just as a spare, just in case everything goes horribly wrong. So not that anyone will really see this unless you're laying on the ground looking at my frame, but I've got all the corners marked out and I'm planning on cutting them and just rounding them out a little bit just to make them a little nicer, cut out just a smidge of weight, not a whole lot, and make them look a little bit more professional. So I'm gonna get started on doing that and we'll see how it looks. As you just saw there, I went ahead and cleaned up these plates. They're all just kind of rounded out a little nicer, a little bit more professional look maybe. I tried to get the radiuses about the same, but some of them I had to take precautions because I didn't want to get too close to the mounting holes. Uh, I wanted to make sure that those were nice and beefy. But yeah, now they're just a little nicer looking. So I've got it measured out perfectly parallel with the frame now. This is about where this pinch weld uh, support is going to sit. I have it spaced out um, with two eighth inch, so it's a quarter inch gap between the rail and the pinch weld. That'll allow for a little bit of flex um, before it makes contact. So I put together this crazy magnet contraption um, because what I'm trying to do is figure out the angle that the, the tubing portion is going to come off of this square tube so that it doesn't interfere with the door. I need to stay below this plane. So I put together this magnet contraption so that I could establish this plane. And then I know that my round tubing is going to come out six inches away from this. So I measured from here at an angle until I hit that plane trying to go as far out and then as far up until I hit that plane as I could and then I marked it so that's the angle that it's gonna be at and then I used this guy uh, I zeroed it and then I lined it up just like that and then what I get is about 22 degrees that this is gonna be kicked up which means I'm, I'll probably round down to 20 degrees keep it simple and now I have my, my angle. This angle for this kick out is pretty difficult for me to do just at home. Um, I've employed the use of a laser level. I've got the actual slider portion here leveled out. I have it tilted down at 20 degrees from horizontal. I've got the laser level going. So let's see if you can see this. So right here, this is where I want the top of the cut to be and then boom, straight down. And then I also have it lined up 
you probably won't be able to see, but it is lined up with the notch or the marking that I have over on the other side. So this is getting pretty, pretty intense, but if I get the cut right, it should, it should be good. Wish me luck. Okay, so I successfully cut both of my side round tubings. This is the second one I've got mocked up. I'm just using it on the same side. I've got cardboard shims just to kind of get the angle and the height perfect. But as you can see, it sits just below the door. The door is open. There's about half an inch or so, three quarter inch gap. Should be perfect. So next, what I need to do is start cutting the horizontal support braces. So the, these guys actually, they're gonna go right there and run between the two. So I just need to measure the distance and then cut it. A little bit of thinking and working with cardboard here. And I think I've got the length and angle that I'll need to cut these two so that they fit up right there, just like that. Okay, I'm back. I've got this thing fine-tuned a little bit more, and now it sits right in there, just about perfect, I think. I think I'm gonna see if I can replicate this three more times. Well, there's number one, and here's two, three, four, ready to go. As you can see, they fit nicely. Um, this is not how it's gonna be. Two of these are for one side, two are for the other. A lot of people, they put in three or even four uh, of these supports. I'm just gonna do two. I'm not like a hardcore rock crawler, so really this is just gonna be like a little bit of oopsie protection as well as a step. I'll probably hit it with some nice black paint, something easy to touch up, and then maybe put a strip of like skateboard grip tape or something on the top just so that you can stand on. It'll be sticking proud of the vehicle, maybe three or four inches, which should be just perfect for a little step. So with that, this'll be a good point for a break. All right. So fast forward a little bit. I went over to a friend's house and he was able to help me out with welding these up. It was pretty tricky and because of time constraints, um, I went ahead and just made sure everything was notched and magneted and ready to go while he welded everything up, which worked great. Uh, we got it all done in just a couple hours. I don't own a welder, hopefully soon, and maybe in the future we'll see some cool uh, DIY welding projects. But in the meantime, I'm grateful to him for helping me weld all this stuff up and uh, now we can move forward. So jumping ahead a little bit, um, I've got this one almost completely ground down. I'm removing all the mill scale so that the paint will adhere better. Um, I've been cleaning up the welds a little bit here and there. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. And now I'm excited to show you the final results of this build. Man, did they turn out better than I expected. I think that these are something that I'll leave on the vehicle for quite some time. No rush at all to replace them in any way. They look great. I think that they'll potentially come in handy for getting up to the roof and even provide some great oopsies protection. The flat black on them, it, it looks fantastic. It's just a cheap primer and spray paint. I'll be able to touch them up whenever I need to and uh, the mounting onto the frame worked out just as great as I could have wanted. Uh, I utilized existing 
uh, threaded frame holes. Uh, I think there's a nut welded on the inside of the box frame and that worked fantastic. I was able to get a lot of purchase on there. So there you have it guys. Thanks for sticking with me on this build and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more builds, more DIY stuff, and more camping and trips in the future. Catch you later. Yeah.